Hi there. Are you frustrated with your e-bike's battery performance? Are you frustrated that the battery range is nowhere close to what the manufacturer says you should get? Well, coming up on this episode of South Out Computing, we're going to go over some improvements that we're going to be doing to our Gigabyte Groove version 2.0, and that's coming up next. Hey YouTube, Dan from South Hawk Computing, and today we're going to discuss the game plan here if you run into a situation where you have an electric bike, and unfortunately you can't find the batteries that you need from your manufacturer because they've magically stopped producing them, or a quote-unquote cheaper alternative and what you could do about it. In today's example, we're going to be looking at what you find in a Gigabyte Grooves battery pack. Now, the marketing for the Gigabyte Groove is kind of funny because they base it on an individual that is approximately 120 pounds and you're going to be riding on flat land. Well, newsflash, I'm going to guess a lot of people are not 120 pounds or less and they don't live in flat areas. This battery here that came with the bike. It's a silicon acid battery. Its projected battery life is about 25 miles. Its capacity is 14 amp hours. It is a 48 volt configuration with 400 charge cycles and it weighs approximately 41 pounds. This thing is not a light battery. And if we punch it up on the screen, you'll see that it's got a whole bunch of those silicon acid batteries all strung up together. Now what's very disappointing is after the first use of this battery here, I was getting about 20 miles on usable battery strength, not the 25 that the manufacturer said you would get. Here we are one year later, and I'm barely getting 10 at full capacity before I see my top speeds greatly diminished. Now we're gonna talk about the lithium ion battery. The huge difference here is lithium ion is only 14 pounds. However, the manufacturer says you can get approximately 30 miles on a single charge, where I was getting about 25 miles on each charge there. This one here is a 20 amp hour capacity battery, obviously also 48 volts. The interesting thing to note here also is the amount of charge cycles that you'll probably get out of the lithium ion battery is 800 versus the 400 you got with the silicon acid battery. So one of the mistakes I made with my electric bike here is I never investigated A, the voltage on what was required for this bike because unfortunately the lithium ion battery from Gigabyte here was about seven to $800 depending on where you bought it from. Little did I know is there are tons of places where you can buy batteries that are lithium ion that are way cheaper and all it takes is a little bit of ingenuity here. Standard disclaimer though, obviously anything we do here can void the warranty on your bike and I'm not going to be responsible if anything goes wrong. So when I begun my research on, you know, finding lithium ion batteries with the same 48 volts as my current battery was, I was able to find a pretty good deal on an exterior battery case from a Gigabyte Groove. Now, it looks like the person who owned this prior was trying to do something similar and I don't know if you could tell, it's bulged here. I don't know if they tried to put two batteries together to get the desired voltage here. It definitely got hot. It has some sort of heat deformation here on the plastic, something bad must have happened inside this uh, enclosure. If I could find one that fits, great. If not, I'm not gonna be too uh, worried about it. What I love is I get to reuse the fuse and also power receptacles so we can plug it into the bike without having to hunt down more parts. Now, my only issue is I'll, I'll have to cut out some of these inserts here to make it fit nicely. It will produce 48 volts at 20 amp hours. So it'll be a very interesting test to see how this homemade type style of lithium ion battery will work and if I could get this battery to perform then it's going to be game on on another video where we're going to go for a 30 or 40 amp hour battery which hopefully will get us anywhere from 30 to maybe 50 miles on a single charge because that would be amazing. So I guess the next part here is to start wiring it up and see what we get.
Okay, time to see if I hooked up the battery correctly. All right, so I had a voltage of 45.9 volts. And now to see if charging works. And we got charging. Batteries assembled. We're gonna let this guy charge and we will see outside if this battery is actually gonna blow anything up or if it's actually gonna work. Let's get this new prototype battery inside the bike. Okay, moment of truth time. Does this thing even turn on? Let's see. Hey, that's an excellent sign and it's showing up full battery bars. All right, let's suit up and get going. We're also gonna be checking for wind noise. Currently there's a lot of wind. We're taking the first right. And nice. Battery voltage still looks good. We don't wanna push it too hard just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still a lot of jiggling going on. I'm gonna have to put like foam on the back to get it perfect. Whew, a lot of heat in this helmet, man. Holy moly. I'm not sure if this feels like it's for, ooh. Bam, we're already down one, uh, one notch when we put this thing under load. Interesting, it goes down to two. We are at 98 miles. I'm gonna find out what this sucker can do. Now with the other lithium battery, it did not go down that far. Oh yeah, that thing is bopping and booping. There's no real place to mount it on the handlebars on this gigabyte groove unfortunately so like anything this is just a test run anyway I'm gonna figure out a way to mount it or clip it in at the top oh yeah this is gonna get quite annoying for the user experience anyway we're on flatland I mean, it is pretty impressive that we're able just to use a regular old lithium ion pack that we grabbed off of eBay and uh, strapped it into the uh, Gigabyte Groove here because, you know, I said, oh, no, you can't use anything else. Uh, shoot, forgot to check the, the speed on this guy. It's got torque. I'll give it that much. All right. I have the torque all the way down going uphill. We only have three bars of battery. So it is really questionable about the amp hours on this sucker. Keeping it down, we're getting to 23. Yep, we're on 23 now. 24, interesting. Yeah, these bumps are definitely showing up on camera. I can see it. A lot of uphills in Connecticut. Nice 84 degrees tonight. Cruising around the streets of Connecticut.
Opa! And oh, we had a failure. Look at what we had happen. So that's the current situation we're dealing with. Cannot believe that happened. Okay, so we need a wrench to really get that in there. And I got some good Loctite to secure this in there. Yep, I need to put an adjustable wrench on this bad boy. I'm happy this happened here and not on the way to work. All right, we're gonna put this in the, the lockup and ride this sucker home. The bad part is I really wanted to get to 20 miles. Oh well. I mean, we still technically can, but I cannot help the motor in any capacity without that pedal. Well, mission accomplished. I was able to incorporate a generic lithium ion battery pack that I purchased off of eBay into my electric bike. Now, the next game plan here is for me to possibly get multiple sets of lithium ion batteries to increase our amp hours to get further distance. I was kind of a little disappointed that this one that we purchased did not give us the same distance as the lithium ion battery that we got from the manufacturer, where that one there got us about 30 miles on a single charge, where this one, on on a good day probably barely got us 20. Hey, we made some progress here. As always, if you like what you see, please give this video a big old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, heck, join our forums. It would be greatly appreciated. This is Dan from Southall Computing, and as always, until the next time.